Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Innovation Podcast, your source for all things innovation. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, today I have Jesse Osborne on the line. He's Senior Director of Sales Development over at Tipalti. Jesse, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Adam. All right, so uh, excited to get into this topic. So we're going to talk about managing remote workers. Um, but before we do that, let's get a little bit further into what you're doing over at Tipalti. Tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Yeah, so Tipalti is an automated AP, accounts payable solution. Uh, what that means Companies that have a high volume of payments that they have to make to businesses uh, don't tend to have the internal staff to handle that. So let's go back 20 years uh, before the gig economy was really a a piece of our daily world. Uh, uh, Companies got invoices sent to them. They reconciled it in their accounting software. They sent out a check or paid it online, and, and they're done. Today, with the gig economy, when you think about the Ubers and the DoorDashes and all the other companies out there that have gig workers, they're having to make payments at an insanely high volume. I think Uber has something around 15 million rides a day, right? So when wow. uh, every time an Uber driver completes a ride, essentially what happens after they click the button, uh, you know, ride complete or whatever that button's called in Uber, every time they do that, the accounts payable department at Uber is notified you owe a payment. So think about that. That's completely changed the way the traditional accounts payable departments uh, are modeled, and that's why Topalti is in existence. And uh, we were started 10 years ago. Our founder started out as kind of a project for a friend of his who was starting a company and said, I just don't know how to pay all these people at a high volume. And he said, well, let me see if I can build something for you. And uh, once he once he got it done, it took him a few months, uh, he said uh, he called up his friend and he said, hey, Topalti, uh, which means in Hebrew, that translates to I took care of it. And that's the wow. name stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a great that's a great story. Um, so that being said, um, at the at the end of this, I'm going to give you an opportunity to leave um, some contact information to uh, for those the business owners that are listening that do want to learn more about the policy, but so that the right type of um, businesses and or industries co- contact. Um, what's what's typically a good fit for Tipalti? Like, what's the no, the normal kind of like niche for clients? Yeah, so, so I'd say companies that are in the ad network space or that, or that have an affiliate program uh, where, they're, where they're having to pay, do a lot of payments, anything gig-related, of course, as I just mentioned. Um, but uh, could, it could just be a big company that has a lot of uh, payments that they have to do, specifically international. Uh, we find a lot of our clients uh, take on vendors all over the world and, and can't handle all the exchange and uh, don't want to pay all the wire transfer fees that come with that. So. Uh, if you've got vendors uh, in other countries, uh, if you're in the gig space, if you're an ad network or your company has an affiliate program, uh, it's worth checking us out. Awesome. Um, let's go a little bit further to today's topic. So um, managing remote workers, um, big, big influx of people working remotely, and I, which we think is a trend that's going to continue. Um, where do you want to start this topic? It's a hot topic right now. Very hot topic right now. Uh, so, so, so I think it, it, it comes to the transition. Uh, so when uh, when you think about companies that historically have worked in a brick and mortar and they've got their, in my world, the sales team that's working on the floor and making a lot of phone calls and trying to drum up business, uh, and it's all in a controlled environment. So to transition that into a remote environment uh, it, it is, a, is, a, is a massive overhaul for, for the leadership team. Not as much, in my opinion, for the individual contributor. Their scenery changes, right? Then they don't get to have their water cooler talk with their with their colleagues. Uh, but how how leaders approach that and and uh, put put structure in place to maintain culture, continue to drive efficiency and productivity, uh, those are all some of the challenges that uh, that leaders have to take when transitioning a team from traditional brick and mortar office to working remote. That's awesome. What do you think are some of the um, I, I guess what do you think are some of the opportunity areas for people to kind of overcome these challenges that we're we're faced with in making these in these transitions? First things first is the hiring profile. Uh, mm. It's and, and it sounds silly. I think most companies already have a hiring profile, but uh, when 
when you're when your hiring profile consists uh, of someone who's moldable, right? And and that you say, hey, we're going to train this person and give them all the tools they need to be successful. Uh, there's there's a training element to this that uh, that has to shift the way you think about who you're going to hire. Uh, the the hey, I got a real quick question, or I don't understand how this works. Those type of questions now those have to be scheduled. And so so looking at the looking at the skills of the people that you're hiring to do the job again, mm. it sounds kind of sort of normal, like we should be doing that anyway when we're hiring people, but not every position that you hire for is going to be one that you bring in someone that already knows how to do the, the bare functions of the job. Uh, a lot of jobs my, in my world, the sales development team, a lot of these folks haven't been in sales. This might be their first or second company they've ever worked for, and uh, they might be just a couple years out of college. So a lot of them need a lot more direction on how to use tools and uh, and just some of the day-to-day components of the job. Uh, and so Doing that and maintaining that from a remote setting uh, is is something that you can you can quickly make up ground for by by looking at the hiring profile and uh, and, and, and making sure to hire towards uh, thinking about how you're going to train that person. Man, you're right. The whole because I think about myself when I was in my first like roll out of school or something like that, and I was I was definitely that person who's just getting a hey, how do I do this or what do I do that? And instead right? of it being a a like like literally thirty second fix, now it becomes a um a thing, right? Like you said, if you have to schedule that or if you have to do this or that, like wow, I didn't wow, you just you kind of blew my mind with that one. Just I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people well, talk about was... other parts of it, but that's that's hard. Yeah, it, 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 and when you think about the think about the effect on productivity, depending on how big your team is, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, as your team gets bigger, uh, if uh, if 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 those meetings where someone could just turn to their neighbor and ask them a real quick question, uh, mm-hmm. the amount of productivity that now gets slowed down, aggregate that over a week, a month, a year, uh, that could be that could be one or two hires, right? right? Uh, as far as the amount of time that that takes, uh, where if you just hired that someone who knew how to do a bigger piece of what you're hiring them to do. Uh, you might, they might each save them 15, 20 minutes a day. And like I said, you aggregate that over the course of a year, that could be like, depending on how big your team is, uh, you might be able to, to hire another person with, wow. with all the cost savings. Yeah. yeah, that's substantial. Um, let's talk about the technology piece of things a little bit. Um, so what yeah. do you think are going to be some of the opportunities on that end uh, for, for this new workforce environment? Such a good question. Yeah, I think so. A lot of us are already using video conferencing. I don't think that's a, that's a new technology. Uh, it's yeah. certainly taken on uh, new legs as of recent. But uh, you know, I think uh, I think people's ability to work from home uh, one is bandwidth at home. I mean, it's such a, it seems so straightforward, but uh, no, you know, do big. your people have like do they have a good connection at home? Calls get dropped if you're in a sales role and you're trying to make calls and you're doing demos or you're having sales meetings. And your call's dropping. How frustrated is your prospect going to be? So that's like number one technology. Make sure you've got all the infrastructure to work from home. That's that's number one. Uh, in addition to all the the video conferencing tools, uh, and and I think those are going to improve over time. I, I think uh, that uh, that as the demand for those is continuing to increase with more remote employees in today's world, I think the features of uh, of the Zoom and the Go to Meetings, and I'm sure there'll be some more disruptors that come in. Uh, soon to uh, to try to try to take some of the piece of that pie, but uh, but but I think that technology is going to be something that we see in the next couple of years really really expand. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about that. And for and, and for some, it is new. Just throwing that out there. But uh, for those of you that uh, were in Skype, what 15 years ago or whatever many years ago, yeah. Skype's been around. Uh, we've been doing video for a while, but uh, I, I think it's a different way of communicating for many many people out there, um, which I think is it's exciting because now that we see that business can be done in that way effectively. I mean, our companies run like that for a long time. Like we have people in many different countries that do different things for us. But um, that being said for those that never had that opportunity i think uh overall we're going to have uh it's going to be interesting to see how how things develop going forward now that some of that geography bias is maybe going behind us a little bit more sometimes the best person for the job isn't in your local market right so now that you have that opportunity to explore further it becomes i think a whole new interesting paradigm shift for many couldn't agree more 
So, Jesse, that being said, um, if somebody's listening to this and they want more information on Topalti um, and to learn more about the services and products, I mean, what's the best way for them to reach out and to do that? Simple. Uh, go to Topalti.com. Uh, that's T-I-P-A-L-T-I.com. Uh, and you can, there's a contact us form on the site and you can plug in all your information and someone on our team will get to you within, uh, within, within an hour. Fantastic. Well, Jesse, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about all the great work you're doing over at Capalti and also providing us your unique insights on uh, managing remote workers. I'm like, I was like, man, you just, you blew my mind with that one. If I can't, if I couldn't turn around and say, hey, how do I do this real quick? Or I'm like, oh man, I might not have got hired on that one, Jesse. You're like, you ain't my guy. I'm like, yeah. hey, sorry, fine. <laughs> no, seriously, no, thank you for Tribal sure. knowledge. You, 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 awesome. you got to organize your tribal knowledge, right? That's good. Uh, well, well, hey, again, thank you, thank for, you for coming you. on the show. Great time. And uh, to Absolutely. the audience, Thanks as that. always, thank you. And to the audience, as always, um, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if uh, you're listening to this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Innovation, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Jesse, thanks again for coming on. Thanks, Adam.